Hello, this is Justin Nahn and Bronwyn Bird. We are living in Lambert Hill, New Jersey on the border of New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Today we are delighted to introduce a wonderful instrument called the Nickel Harpa. All right, we're gonna start off with just a little song to get things going. Sail away, ladies. that song we're going to talk a little bit about the nickel harpa where it comes from what the name means and Brahman will also talk about a little bit of the schematic of the instrument the layout so you already gave it away this instrument is called a nickel harpa there it is and I want you to think about what other instrument this maybe looks like some people think it looks like a piano because it has keys. Some people think it looks like a guitar because you play it on your lap. And sometimes you play it even with a strap. Some people think it looks like a violin because it has F holes. It has F holes like a violin, a tailpiece like a violin, strings like a violin, and most importantly, a bow that you play it with. So if we look at this nickel harpa, it has 16 strings, but I am just playing on these four main ones, A, C, G, and my bottom C. And in between it has all these little resonant strings, 12 of them, so one for every note. And when I play a note, those are just there resonating back like this. Giving it that great big sound. So over here with my left hand, I'm playing all of these keys, just like you would on an accordion or a piano. And I've got three rows of keys. So in total, I have about 42 keys. That's a lot of keys to finger. This first row is working my top string. The second row is my second string. Third row, you 
guessed it, third string. My bottom string has no keys on it because it's called a drone string. And that means it stays the same all the time. So that's it, 16 strings total, 42 keys. Nickel harpa. In Swedish, nickel means key and harpa means fiddle. So it's a keyed fiddle. All right, we're going to play you something else. Okay. So I thought we'd do something that they could sing along with. Let's do that. You may or may not know a tune about a rattlin bog and the things that grow in the rattlin bog. I, think I know that one. If you know it, it join in. If you don't know it, you'll catch on. Right. We are going to share a song all about a beautiful tree. And in fact, these instruments are made out of wood. So we thought that we'd share a song all about trees. Here it comes. One, the two, rattling bog. The rattling bog. Rattling bog. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> So we talked a little bit about how the nickel harpa works and that it's made out of wood. We didn't say much about where it comes from. We did. We said it came, it comes from Sweden, but where is Sweden? 
Mm, where is Sweden? It's, well, we're living in New Jersey, so I know that we couldn't get there. Wait, we could drive there, right? I don't think so. No, we couldn't. Wait, could I take a rowboat? Uh, I don't think so. Could I take a big boat? I like to walk. Could we walk? We could not walk there. Uh, could perhaps. we take a, a really big boat? Yeah, we, we probably could, actually. I think we could. Could we fly there? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So it's pretty far away if we go across the ocean. Other side of the ocean is where nickel harpas come from, mm -hmm. from a place called Sweden. A really long time ago, nickel harpas go all the way back to the early 1400s. That's a lot of years ago. That's even older ago. than the violin. This nickel harpa, however, I built myself when I was about 18 years old. So it's not so, so old. Um, so Nickel Harp is coming from Sweden. We want to play you a Swedish tune. And in Sweden, they do a kind of dance called a polska. Not a polka, but a polska. Can you say that? Pol polska. And polskas, in order to play them, you need to be able to count to three. That's pretty easy. We can do that. One, two, three. In Swedish, et två. Tre. Simple. One, two, three. Trick is, you're not going to actually step on every beat. You're only going to step on beats one and three. So if I go one, two, three, 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 one, two. Three. And there's all sorts of different kinds of polskas that play around with this kind of a beat. So we're going to play a really fun, simple one from a place in Sweden called Uppland. And I want you to see if you can stomp your feet on one and three, or clap your hands, or wiggle your shoulders, or shake your head. Well, one, that makes sense three, because a polska is a type of dance. dance. It's a dance, and this is a dance tune called Polska. After boatsman deck. After means kind of brought along from somebody, not necessarily by them, but transported by them in some way to the next person. Here it comes Polska after boatsman deck. How'd you do? Did you clap on one and three? Dance on one and three? One. That's a polska. Pretty simple. Now here's the catch. There's lots of different kinds of polskas. There's also something called a slang polska. And a slang polska, you actually step on every single beat. Et two tre, et two tre, et two tre, et two tre. So you'll dance on every single beat, 
But if you have a partner, you can hold their hands and you can do all sorts of twisty movements at the same time. So we try that while we play? I don't think we can do that at the same time as playing. Oh, man. <laughs> um, we are going to try playing a slang polska for you and you can see if you can dance on every single beat. If you have a partner, you can hold hands mm -hmm. and see if you can do some twisty things in the air at the same time. This is called Polska number 32, written by a man named Biskale a very, very long time ago. Number 32. There it is. So these are different types of dances. Different and the music dances. was designed to help dancers get around the floor in a circular fashion. And usually the nickel harpa player or a fiddle player or an accordionist would be in the middle of the dancers and they dance around them. That's one of the reasons why they put resonant strings on this instrument is so that it would give us this really big sound and all the dancers would be able to hear it. Even if there was just one nickel harpa playing in the middle of the room, they could still hear it as they dance round. They didn't need microphones or anything like that yep. back in the day. Mm -hmm. And we thought that we actually haven't talked about where it, it came from. Sometimes with instruments, you have one type of an instrument that someone can look at and say, ooh, I have a different way that I would like to make that, to maybe have a different functionality or a different way of playing it. The hurdy-gurdy is an instrument that looks like a boat, and it has a key box. This is called the key box, very similarly to a hurdy-gurdy, but a hurdy-gurdy, you hold it on your lap like this, the face up, and it has a crank, a metal crank that goes around in a circular motion. And what you do is you put your hands over the key box, and you play like this. But if you would open a hurdy-gurdy up, which will show a picture of that, if you would open up a hurdy-gurdy, the key box, the innard would look very similar, or if not identical to the nickel harpa, but the notes may be different depending on when it was built and when it was played. Yeah. So when Justin says where it came from, he also means who developed it. So a long time ago, this instrument you wouldn't have been able to play all different kinds of music on it because it used to be a diatonic instrument. That means you're stuck playing the same set of maybe seven notes, maybe 14 notes. It doesn't have all of the possible um, notes that you can play. Now, a man named Eric Solstrom came along and he added all of the notes that there are so that you can play. <laughs> Every single one, which means 
you're not limited to playing just folk music. You can play all sorts of things on it. We're going to talk about those things, but first we need to play a song by that very man, by Eric Sahlstrom. He's the one that made it a chromatic instrument, and he's the one that also made it popular in Sweden in the 70s. It was almost non-existent at that point. Yeah. And now it's a popular instrument again, and it's becoming popular even in this country. And in Sweden, they have a folk music school, uh, the Erik Solström Institute, and Bronwyn went there, right? Sure did. So we're going to do a tune by Erik Solström. Should we do Spellman's Gledge? Yeah, let's do that. Spellman's Gledge. It's a waltz, so you're still counting to three, but now you don't have to do any tricky one, three things. You're going to mm -hmm. just do a regular old waltz. And if you don't know what a waltz is, it's another type of dance. It's another type of dance. Okay, here it comes. <laughs> Spellman's Gledja. Spellman's Gledja means fiddler's joy, basically. A Spellman is a fiddler or a musician, any kind of musician, really. So that was a little Spellman's Gledja. So do you have to play Swedish music if you want to play nickel harpa? No, you don't. You most certainly do not. You can play anything. You could play classical music. <laughs> jazz. played bluegrass music, we've played old time music, we've played contemporary, contemporary music as well. What are the cool kids playing these days? Oh my gosh, I think it varies depending on who you ask. <laughs> Thank you. 
It is a lot bigger. It's called the bass nickel harpa. It is a lot bigger. It's maybe hard to tell on this screen, but if I were to stand it on the floor and stand up, you can see that it's more than half my height. It is a big beast. I call it Holger. He's named after a giant that has a house built on the tip of his nose, Holger. So the bass nickel harpa, some people call it a cello harpa because it sounds kind of more like the range of a cello. It's just one octave lower than the nickel harpa, which sounds like the, the regular nickel harpa, which sounds like this. So you can hear much lower. That's the second string, my first string. And then my third string. I would have a bass string. This one doesn't have it right now. I need to put it back on. And then it has 12 resonance strings, just like a regular nickel harpa. 42 keys, just like a regular nickel harpa. It's just bigger. So we're going to play you a little tune on this great big bass nickel harpa. This is a tune I wrote called Hem Vender Ongerst, which basically is like a home returning anguish. It's a, a, the opposite of being homesick. So here we are, Hem Vender Ongest.
So that's the base nickel hepa. Hole again. All right, we've got one more kind of nickel harpa to show you, and this is one of the older kinds of nickel harpas called a mora harpa. It looks a little bit like the regular nickel harpa or the base nickel harpa, but there are a few differences, and I want to see if you can spot what these differences are. Put my base nickel harpa down and pick up the mora harpa. There it is. So see if you can see a few differences. If I hold it up really close, you can try to count the strings. Are there more or less strings? Are there more or less keys? And what about those sound holes? They're not F holes anymore. They're shaped like hearts. So this is what a nickel harpa would have looked like before it turned into those other kinds of nickel harpas that I was playing. This is called a mora harpa. It just has three strings and the drone string is actually in the middle of the instrument. So you get a drone pretty much no matter what. And you only have two rows of keys. So I was talking about before chromatic and diatonic. This is not chromatic. You cannot play everything on it. You can't play jazz and classical music but you can play some pretty crazy old tunes with a pretty wild older style bow. So the older nickel harpas have really curved bows. The newer nickel harpas have straight bows, more like a violin. These curved bows back in the day, you would have actually not even had the hair attached. You had to hold the hair in with your fingers, with your thumb, and how much pressure you put on it would tighten or loosen the bow. Our modern ones, we have this thing at the end called a frog. And the frog is what lets you tighten and loosen the hair. It's made out of horse hair. But with the old kind of bow, you would have just held it in with your finger and made it tighter, tighter or looser. And then play these two strings at the same time. crazy thing is that the keys actually come out the back side of the instrument. See that there when we push them through? They come right through and out the other side. So when I push these keys, just like on the regular nickel harpa, when I push the key in, it's hitting a little wooden tangent into the string and fretting it just like your finger would on a guitar. So these instruments are really fretted instruments. And when I push the next one a little bit higher, it's going to make a higher note as I go up this way and lower as I go down this way. And then, and then there's make that drone in the middle. Right? Absolutely. That's the best part about playing nickel harpa. Mustaches, back scratchers, nose pickers. No. Oh, don't, don't do, do that. that. No, don't no. do that. Disgusting. So that's the Mora harpa. It's really beautiful. You can play some pretty neat older tunes on it. All right. I think we're going to play just one more tune for you. And we're going to go back to the regular nickel harpa for this tune. Justin and I love to play Swedish music. We love to play Irish music. We love to play community music. That's what we do here at the Birdhouse where we live. It's a community music center and we teach music including nickel harpa, accordion, guitar, flute, all kinds of instruments with all ages and all kinds of people. We also both do music therapy, which is one of our sort of main passions in life. And we just love making music with people of all sorts, That's all right. walks of life. And we studied at Berklee College of Music in Boston, Massachusetts. So besides the great Swedish music that comes with this nickel harpa, we love to play for contra dances and we love playing Irish music and original music. So we're just going to play something that we love to play together. Sure. What's it going to be? Hmm. Why don't we play one of the bluegrass tunes we like? All right. What do you think? Yeah, how about a little Sleepy Eye John, maybe? Sure. Is that a good one? Sure. Or Columbus Stockade Blues? No, let's... let's we're going with Sleepy, Sleepy Eye John. John. Here it is. Key of B flat. 
Sleepy Eye John. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I'm Bronwyn. This is Justin, the Birdhouse Center for the Arts. We hope you enjoyed. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Wait, Bye. We, we said, wait, we said goodbye. We said goodbye. You wanted an encore. That's right. We heard you clapping oh, from all the way wherever it is that you're watching this from. We heard you loud and clear. And encore it is, our favorite little tune on the Danforth.
again. Bye.